Autistic people encounter numerous obstacles in completing tasks that may appear straightforward to others. From mundane chores to basic upkeep, the difficulties are manifold. One significant barrier is executive dysfunction, which affects the brain capacity to initiate and engage in tasks effectively. It's similar to attend and engage in tasks effectively. It's similar to trying to navigate a maze. While most people can follow a clear path, autistic people may find themselves lost in a labyrinth, struggling to find a way forward. The process feels like trying to solve a puzzle, with missing pieces, inherently challenging and often discouraging, especially when the tasks aren't inherently enjoyable. Another contributing factor to these challenges is bottom-up thinking. Autistic brains often require comprehensive information to function and engage in tasks compared to others. While holistic brains adeptly bridge gaps in knowledge, autistic brains need all the pieces of the puzzle up front to operate smoothly. Clear instructions, breaking tasks into manageable steps are dispensable. However, seeking such clarity can lead to misunderstanding. Many autistic people have been criticized for seeking too much detail, misinterpreted as unwillingness or rebellion, rather than a genuine need for understanding. Moreover, sensory sensitivities compound the struggle. Autistic brains struggle to filter out stimuli, experiencing environmental inputs in sensitivity. What may mildly affect others can be processed as physical pain and discomfort. For autistic people, everyday sounds can pierce like needles, causing sharp vascular pain. Similarly, odors can trigger involuntarily gagging reflexes, making simple tasks like brushing teeth or cleaning overwhelming experiences. Textures and taste in the mouth can also pose challenges, with certain foods and textures causing discomfort or even gagging sensations. These sensory issues can significantly impact executive functioning. For instance, difficulty in filtering out irrelevant sensory stimuli can lead to a sense of overload, make it hard to focus and prioritize tasks effectively. Additionally, sensory sensitivities may result in avoiding behaviors, such as avoiding certain environments or tasks that can trigger discomfort leading to difficulties in planning and organizing. Furthermore, the constant need to manage sensory input can be mentally exhausting, making it harder to initiate and sustain tasks over time. While some people may develop coping mechanisms to manage the impact of sensory issues on executive functioning, the pervasive nature of these challenges can still make even the simplest activities daunting. One of the difficulties in executive dysfunctioning is transitioning from one thing to another. For example, when you're laying in, in bed, warm under your blanket, coming out into the cold can be very uncomfortable. So it has nothing to do with being lazy or not wanting to do something. But it takes a lot of preparing for the brain to transition from one thing to another. Another example can be transitioning from a dry body with clothes on, pulling off the clothes and stepping into the shower and getting wet can also already feel very uncomfortable. So transitioning from in a dry body to a wet body can be very difficult. It is hard to explain to neurotypicals why this is so hard to transition from one thing to another. 
Another example can be your inside. You have to go outside, it is winter, it is cold, or maybe even raining. The comfort of being warm inside and then transitioning to the cold can be very difficult. Even though we can love being outside and being in nature, transitioning and pushing ourselves to do something can sometimes feel like pushing a metal or a heavy block. Another thing is planning and prioritizing. It's crucial for organizing tasks effectively, yet with executive dysfunctioning, even seemingly straightforward tasks can feel overwhelming due to an inability to determine where to begin and how to proceed. In essence, autistic or people with ADHD are not lazy or unintelligent. Rather, they contend with significant cognitive challenges that make maintaining and sustaining basic tasks profoundly demanding. Today is another day that I have a difficult time with, with like daily tasks like just like not brushing my teeth and washing my face and uh, yeah I'm just going to accept it for today um, because taking care of my children is more important um, so I'm just going to put my hair in a hair bun and um, yeah that's it so I'm dressed, that's already something, so um, yeah, I'm close to my uh, menstruation and that's when I feel like I'm more tired, things get more difficult, I also feel like from my spiritual point of view that uh, like my spiritual gifts get more awakened at this time, so um, when my third eye is more um, open, I get more vivid dreams, more uh, like channelings, things that come through. I feel like more contact to other worlds and that makes my physical body way more exhausted and way more tired. So um, yeah, I'm close to my moon time. That's the most spiritual time in the month. Um, and. Yeah, if you would live naturally, we would like live in a tribe and the women would like menstruate together and you would go like to a red tent or something and use that time for all the wisdom and the channeling and the downloads that come through. But in this life, we all live so disconnected that it's not, not happening for a lot of women. I'm not saying not possible because a lot of people are starting to do that. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like um, I feel like we autistic uh, beings uh, feel that we live so unnaturally as humans, and I think our whole entire brain and body makes it so that we have to push to this change. So yeah, but it's not easy, and it can be yeah really dysfunctional. Uh, and really hard sometimes to take care of our physical body.
Every morning, Jolene faces a battle just to get out of bed. The simplest tasks, like brushing her teeth, can feel like insurmountable obstacles. It's not just the tiredness, it's the relentless grip of executive dysfunction that narrows its hold on her mind and body each day. Her exhaustion is not just physical, it's mental. Executive dysfunction clouds her thoughts, making even the most basic decisions feel overwhelming. The laundry piles up, the dishes go unwashed, and Jolene finds herself drowning in a sea of unfinished tasks, all because her brain struggles to process and prioritize. And yet, despite the weight she carries, Jolene does her utmost to care for her children. Each of them also navigates the challenges of autism. The hours she spent preparing and taking care of homeschooling can weigh heavily on her, leaving her drained before the day has even begun. Help! 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 help for Jolene, and countless others like her, autism is not just a diagnosis, it's a daily struggle. But with understanding and support, she finds the strength to face each day, determined to overcome the hurdles that executive dysfunction throws in her path. say it would affect me in a way that sometimes I can push through to do the task like now I'm not this tired I feel the sorry for the background noises that's the pump of the water um, but sometimes I feel like this sometimes I just can do the work some days I feel like the pushback the the yeah, I don't know how to describe it, but like sometimes I feel like I have to push myself very hard to start and sometimes I get to work through it and be able to do it and then some days I will not be able to push and then it's going to be impossible and then it's just going to be there uh, and it has effect on me because I want it. I want these tasks to be done. Um, I want my house to be clean. I want my clothing to be washed and in the closet. Um, so it's not that you are lazy and don't want to do it. I feel like, but it's difficult when you're not able to push through because you're so exhausted. And then I have a yearning for help. Yeah, well, it impacts me because, first and for all, when the house is not clean, it brings more triggers, it brings more, um, yeah, sense, sen like senses that get overloaded. And also, in a way, I feel like I'm failing. I'm failing my husband, I'm failing my children, I'm failing myself. And he also gets stressed when the house is not clean because it's also for him um, difficult. And and then you then I start to spiral in a negative mindset where I my brain is pulling myself down. Uh, so that can be draining my mental health and cause depression sometimes. 
yes. Um, yeah, I feel like when I am right before my menstruation, <laughs> when I'm right before my menstruation, I am way more sensitive um, for sen sensations. Uh, also, I'm just more easily triggered and uh, I'm way more tired then. So, um, because I'm more tired, I have more, um, I suffer more from ejaculative, dysfunc ejaculative dysfunction because then it's harder to get out of bed, it's harder to start to tasks, it gets way more difficult to take care of my own physical body, to brush my teeth, to eat, to wash my face, like all of these basic stuff gets way more harder the closer I get to my menstruation, my moon time. Um, so yeah, and I also have PMDD, which is um, like PMS, but where you can really get like depressions and feel very down. Um, and when the tasks can't be done because of this disability that I'm having, it adds on to those negative emotions. Yeah, of course I have then three children to take care of. So how do you do that? And that's a great question. Um, well, while my own care of myself goes into the background, like I wake up, don't brush my hair, don't brush my teeth, don't wash my face, actually don't even dress. Uh, I'm just like then in pajamas or like a sweatpants or anything comfy. Um, don't eat breakfast and yeah, I have to do a lot from the sofa. Um, how do I do that with children? Like when I wake up, I make them breakfast. I let them be in pyjamas. Like I don't care in these days that they are dressed or not. Um, we work in the sofa. Um, we take the books with us and we learn from sitting down while we sit down. Um, and then when they have to eat and drink or need something, um, those are the moments that I really push and push myself through and it's not always easy but I love my children, I take care of my children as much as possible and if that means being in pajamas all day long, if that means that we eat a little bit more crappy food like a lasagna in the oven or pizza or go and get fries, um, then so be it on these days because we have to survive and we have to take care. And um, yeah, that's how we cope with it. Yeah, so I'm always happy to be able to have pushed through, even though it sometimes is hard. Some days it really is possible to push through. And uh, yeah, because also tomorrow we have like a carnival. Oh, I have a phone call. I have a phone call to make too that I have been pushing out. Oh, I didn't expect certain questions already. Like, I know when my children are born, but like, they ask for, like, it was about my children, and they asked for, like, uh, their birth uh, date, and, uh, yeah, when I'm stressed, I know that my kids are born, but when I'm stressed, I'm like, ooh, and I have difficulty with numbers, so, um, in Dutch, 21 is told in reverse, like, 21 is, no, not 21, that's not a good example. Uh, for example, 24, then we would say 24, 
So we would say first the four and then the two. So that makes it so difficult and so I am dyslexic and dyscalculia. So it's like my brain is like oh and then they ask for like phone numbers and like um ah oh. then the the name of like the doctor that we are and I just can't remember the name. It's like uh, we have several doctors because it's a practice. Uh, so I can't remember their names because it's always a different one and then I forgot uh, the name of the practice. I was like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I just told like, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm stressed. And she said, was so nice. I was like, oh, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> oh my god. Ah. Oh, I need a break after that phone call. I'm going to make a tea um, of herbs of herbs out of the garden that I have harvested. Um, one of my special interests is gardening, is plants, is nature, uh, everything natural, is medicine out of the garden, is health, it's all connected. All my interests are actually interconnected with each other. So. Uh, but these are um, strawberry leaves and I'm Waiting, I'm waiting for my moon time, my menstruation to come, um, and this plant helps a little bit with activating your uh, menstruation if you're late. I'm always, almost every time, ten time, ten days late, and I want it to come a little bit earlier. It also smells super well, <laughs> super good. Uh, but I want her to come a little bit earlier because next week, and if I would be 10 days late again, I would be 10 days late again. I have mostly a cycle of 40 days, which is long, uh, probably because I'm underweight. Um, <clears throat> yeah, then next week, next Friday, we have an appointment. We are going to Queen a show. Um, and uh, I don't want to be in pain and, uh, and with my menstruation. I want to be able to enjoy it without being exhausted, without being in pain, without needing rest. Uh, because when I'm on my moon time, I really want to be going inwards and have silence and do nothing. So I cannot, don't want to sense the overload of a show when I'm on my moon time. Um, so yeah, <sighs> let's pray. Today I have an appointment to someone that is interested in my creative therapy, so a potential client, and I have to like get washed and I really feel like the resistance and feel like if I didn't have to do anything I would probably not wash myself today, I'm like, nah, uh, even though it can be so relaxing and I just... Yeah, I feel like I don't want to get wet. I don't want to have my hair drying for so long. Um, I just don't want the cold when I'm come out, coming out of the shower. And um, yeah, I feel a lot of resistance. And I really feel like when I'm almost at my moon time, when I almost have my menstruation, like the days before I get more tired, so everything then takes more effort i feel like and is more exhausting so then i have to always push myself more and i also feel like i'm more um sensitive uh, high sensitive and also then more um vulnerable for meltdowns and so on so yeah but i'm going to take a shower I have done it. I have been in the shower and uh, once I'm in the shower I'm totally fine. Like I love the warm water so I don't always understand why getting me in the shower is like pushing a block of heavy metal or something, something heavy. Like it just feels like sometimes exhausting to just do something. So when I was in the shower um, I was like stimming, like moving underneath the water and uh, then I start like eating, I don't know if you can see it, if I can zoom in, maybe my camera is blurry when I'm doing that, like I don't know if you can see, I start biting all the skin 
of my my fingers and I do that ever since I was little. Um, that's a stim. Um, and I will make a video about stimming or you maybe already know what stimming is. Um, but yeah, I started doing that. And then when I'm like in that stage of stimming <laughs> in the zone, being in the shower, I really feel like, and now what? How am I going to get out? Like it's so nice underneath the warm water. I don't want to get out. I don't want to get cold. Uh, <laughs> so then it's pushing myself to stop the shower. I have been in the shower now for half an hour and um, I don't want to waste water. It's wasteful. So I always hate it when I don't get out of the shower. And uh, first I have to push myself to go in the shower and one motivation can be like mm, masturbating in the shower can be <laughs> a motivation to get in the shower. Sometimes we have to motivate ourselves or have a reason to do something. Um, but yeah, then getting out of the shower. Um, yeah, it was difficult. So now I'm out. I have to dress myself. Um, but this is an example of like a small toss that goes so easily for neurotypical people and it's hard to explain to them why we have difficulty because we don't understand ourselves. Like I don't know why I have this difficulty. Uh, I don't know why my brain is like, oh, this is so hard. It's like my body needs to be dragged to the shower. I have to convince myself. I have to have a good reason. I have to like have to do it. And then there is all this resistance. <laughs> I also have like PDA, so I don't want to have to have to do it. And yeah, yeah, welcome into my world. <laughs>